So as I've said, a key aspect of how we work together in, in country, in, in the countries where we are, where, where, where we are all placed there together, the NGO side, the uh, government side, of course, is already there. But, but the bilaterals and the multilaterals is, is looking at how we, we can maximize the comparative advantage, you know, what we bring to the, to, the, to the table, and how we can maximize the impact of those resources in benefiting those who were, were there to help, in this case, the hungry poor. So in the case of WFP, we supply food through local and international NGO op operations. They oftentimes uh, have very, very strong local presence. Uh, they're very cost effective. Uh, uh, on the ground, they know the ground very well. They have good local knowledge. They're looking. They're they're they're, they're working in local languages. They have citizens of the country, people right from the same community. Uh, it, it it makes a huge difference uh, that you don't have expensive expats running all around trying to run these programs where you can do it so much cheaper. Not not just from an economic point of view, but a more sustainable point of view, a, a more community involved point of view. By working, by working through local NGOs and their international counterparts who are, again, working to, to support them. But there are also issues and considerations that often come up. Um, there sometimes is, a, is this perceived sense of competition between international and local NGOs. There is some jealousy at times, which is quite understandable, in that the, the uh, international NGOs uh, will, will have um, uh, you know, funding that many of the local NGOs only, only dream about. They only wish that they could have that, that level of support. Uh, there are issues of, of overhead, uh, the, the percentage of, um, of uh, funding that the local NGOs receive to implement uh, many of these same programs that will be lower, of course, than, than what, uh, what many of the in, uh, international NGOs and what the, mul the multilateral partners may have. The roles that we play the, the costs involved, uh, maybe some resentment about international staff, such as myself, being involved in the program where, where some, some NGOs are in some countries, they will very much prefer that they do it all themselves and uh, have limited, limited involvement from the expatriates. Oftentimes, the expatriates, on the other hand, need to be involved because of the accountability and monitoring issues where donors are concerned that, um, that um, all of the resources are going to where they were intended to go, the way the program was, was designed, and they're concerned that if there are issues of corruption and lack of transparency in a particular country, which, which could often be the case, that that will, be, that, that will become a problem if, if, if there are international oversight not, not provided. This is a constant debate, and there are a lot of sensitivities uh, in, in this particular issue. Still on this issue of the dynamic between the local bilateral, the, the, the local NGOs, the international NGOs, bilateral, multilateral agencies, host government, another, another issue that, that can often come up is the relationship, the role that the local NGO has with the local government or with the host government, the, the national government, let's say. Um, oftentimes, by definition, the fact that the NGO even exists, let's say, uh, in an advocacy role, operational role for, for uh, the hungry poor in a particular area, they may, by definition, then be in an adversarial position vis-a-vis -vis the central government. Maybe they're, they're critical of the central government that they don't do more, or they should do this or that, or they're discriminating against that particular group or such. And remember what we've, we've explained in this class uh, in terms of the issues of vulnerability and, and the face of the hungry poor, oftentimes they are those most disenfranchised, those most disadvantaged in a particular country. And you can imagine you would have NGOs who are there to assist. And by definition, then, they could be in a, in a, in a, in a, in a position where they are seen to be criticizing or are actively criticizing central government, and the, the government may not be comfortable with that. But at the same time, then, we're looking for a local partner to help us implement programs, distribute food, medicines, uh, in, be involved in local training programs to, again, they can do it in, they, they, are, they have the cultural understanding, they can do it in local language, but we may run into difficulties uh, in terms of, of selecting certain groups. The same point that I'm making also, also applies when, when you're looking at host governments 
and their interest in supporting or in, in, in bringing in certain NGOs into their uh, country. Sometimes many governments uh, in the third world will, will be concerned that they do not have any sanction or any particular uh, any accountability in terms of working with these, these organizations. They're non-governmental. Sometimes governments are more comfortable working with governmental organizations, the bilaterals, the multilaterals, because they, they get what they see. They see what, what they get. We, we come in, whether, whether it's someone like myself as the country director for a particular UN agency or whether I'm an ambassador of, of my country, this is a formal relationship. Uh, you choose to be a member of the UN and you've asked us to come in and help you. You, you. you understand very much what the terms of engagement are. It's the same when you have an ambassador representing a country. So the U.S. ambassador, for example, is ultimately responsible for what USAID, as the U.S. Bilateral Development Agency, will do in a particular country. So you as the, foreign, as the prime minister, the foreign minister, the, the head of state, president, uh, you, you understand that you know, you're there and uh, you're an extension of foreign policy goals for that government, in this case the U.S., and you kind of know, know where you stand. By definition, with non-governmental means non-government in that you're private, uh, your mandate may not be as well known, or, or some governments may feel that uh, your, your, your motives uh, might be a little suspect, or maybe you're, you're somewhat anti-government, and you're there to maybe cause them problems and stir unrest among the population. You're there to support. There's many, many considerations and, and issues of this type that do come up here, here and there. And they basically come down to issues of control. And many times NGOs will be, will, will be sent away uh, from a country for this, for this reason uh, because of the host government not feeling comfortable, and which is a key problem then for us in terms of the effectiveness of our implementation and that we try to avoid, of course, doing all this ourselves because it's expensive and difficult and not as sustainable as when we, we work through local partners.